Hi, my name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting classes and complete commission projects for clients all over the country. Uh, today I'm going to show you a finish I teach in my beginner class and I've completed on uh, numerous projects all around for restaurants, private homes, churches, and uh, casinos. It's a marble technique called vert de mir, which looks like a uh, Mediterranean sea green or sometimes referred to as an Egyptian sea green. Um, but there you go. Let's get our tools, let's get our materials, and let's get started. So the first thing I've done to get ready for today's technique is base coated the surface. Now I base coated it for a product called Emerald from Sherman Williams. The color is tricorn black and I'm using eggshell enamel. Uh, pretty simple. I like eggshell because flat. I use eggshell enamels or eggshells. Sorry, I always say enamel just because it's a force of habit. Um, eggshell finish paint over flat. Flat's too porous, it sucks the glaze in, I can't manipulate it. Semi-gloss is too smooth, it's too slick, I can actually wipe it off and it makes it a lot harder to work. Eggshells, preferably, satins work is just as good. They're just preference, but I prefer eggshell. It's just the right consistency of sheen to do what I need to do. All right, so I rolled the surface, uh, color is tricorn black. I used uh, two coats of, uh, and I rolled it on using a very, very fine nap roll hair roller. I'm talking the finest of fine, three eighths. Um, I just like the mohair because it just lays it down better. Okay paint, now the glaze. Today we're going to use Modern Masters Decorators Glaze. It used to be called Scumble Glaze. Don't know why they changed the name. Doesn't matter to me. It works the exact same way. Nothing's changed about it. Cleans up with soap and water. Tints with universal colorants. Never paint. Decorators Glaze will dry on its own. It has a drying, drying agent built into it. So if I take it, smear it on a wall, it will dry crystal clear. That doesn't mean you can use it as a top coat. I wouldn't. It's a glaze. Um, but it cleans up soap and water, interior, I have used it for exterior surfaces, I've always just clear coated it with exterior uh, poly. What else? Tints with uh, universal colorants. Modern Masters does make their own line of pig, uh, colorants that work in their products. Nothing wrong with it, I just don't happen to have any today, so I'm going to be using my Mixols. But it's, I've used Cal Tints, I've used Proline, I've used uh, some of the pigments from the paint store. I'm not a big fan of those in my glazes because they tend to make finishes very opaque um, and take away the transparency of the glaze. And that's pretty much it. So, first thing we're going to do is my favorite black nylon bristle, Pretty Peacock. This is the clear glaze straight out of the can. See that? It looks a little creamy, a little milky in the can. But watch, when you put it on and brush it out, it's crystal clear. And that's what we're looking for. What I'm doing now is a slip coat, meaning I'm going to put this on first and it's going to hydrate the surface. See what happens when we put it on too thick? Not too thick. So what it's doing is it's hydrating the surface. That means, so this is soaking it in, it's kind of prepping it a little bit. That way when I start putting my color glazes on, it uh, gives them, they slip and slide a little bit more and I know what you're thinking, he said, well why not just use semi-gloss? because he wants it to slip and slide a little bit. No, I want it not to penetrate in. This hydrates it, giving me the time to do what I want to do. Semi-gloss, this would be like working over, it'd be too slick, this doesn't work. So, putting it on top to bottom. Now we're gonna stretch it out. Sort of stretching it out at the moment. Now we're gonna go side to side, and what this does is just evens it out. I'm not worried about brush strokes in this because there's a lot of work to do, and they all will Slowly go away over a period of time. Boom, boom. Like so. Okay. Now, I've tinted my glaze, like I said. This is the, I just put it into a cup so I can work out of it. This is a Mixol, number 15, olive. And what we're going to do first is down here that I have my bucket of water with a natural wool sea sponge. These are the softest sea sponges you can possibly get. They're the soft, soft, soft stuff. A little guy like this is 10 bucks. Um, oh, down in the comment section below, I will make sure I put links to all the products, tools, and materials that you see me using. So I'm gonna take the guesswork and hours of searching the internet away from you. You don't need to do that. You'll be able to get it, boom, just like that. Okay, natural wool sea sponge, and she is damp. Not, uh, not wet, like if I wring it out, nothing comes out. All right, it's just damp. So we're gonna use the, to start with the flat side. And I don't have my palette. Wasn't ready, so I'm gonna make do real quick. 
I usually work off of a little palette. I don't like when I do this. I don't like working off of uh, out of buckets or things. So I pour a little bit of the glaze onto the palette, and what I'll do is I'll take my sponge suit and I'll load it. And now I'm going to work in a diagonal pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit it. See how I move the sponge around a little bit, so it's not a consistent look. Now I'm also going to keep coming back. I might put some heavier stuff here, like so. We're going to take a minute, and I'm going to get a piece of plastic, a 0.7 millimeter thick plastic bag with no color, no ink on it, simply because I don't want it to transfer from here to there, which it could do, and a lot of times does. The, for this case, I'm just using these cheap trash can liners. I'm going to open it up so it's super, super thin, and then crumple it up. I'm just going to come in here and break all this glaze up even more. So what happens is some of the glaze, see it, it break it, break, break it up. And see, I'm not just going to tap. If I just tap, it's not much happens. It gets a little smaller, but not much. This is just straight olive, nothing crazy yet. I might put a, and see this is where I can kind of come back. If I want, I can get a little bit more right here and break it up again. Remember background, this is our background. Put just a little bit there. Maybe we'll come back through here just a little bit, not much. I'm not trying to create a, uh, a faux finish all over. We're trying to make this, it can, it's organic and irregular is the plan. Okay, trash bag finished, put it to the side. Badger brush, this cat. Are we there yet? Hold on. No, we're not. I gotta step ahead of myself. Rinse out your sponge. Get that color out of there. My white glaze, mix all number 25 into the decorator's glaze. I'm gonna put it on my palette. And I'm gonna sponge a little bit of white into this. Because we're trying to get this very organic, very natural blending things. I was gonna kind of hit it with some white, not much. Let's see what that does. Plastic bag again to break it up. Put some in here. And of course I put my sponge in the water. No big deal, so we have it here. Okay, now we're ready for the badger brush. What we're gonna do is triple row. It's our one inch wide, triple row because there's three rows of hairs. Silver tip because it's a longer, softer bristle. Ah, yes, it's from a real badger. Um, I don't like synthetics, I think they're too hard. You're gonna use this brush when you use it, it's into the surface straight in, not at an angle. When it's in an angle, it drags, leaves scratch marks. And also I'm gonna just come in here and cloud this up. Tickling the surface, I'm barely touching it. All right, now you'll find sometimes if the glaze starts to get ahead of you, meaning it's like setting up a little bit, you might add a little bit more pressure, but the goal is not to. Okay, hair broke off, no big deal, grab it, get it out of the way. I can stipple this out a little bit if I choose to, if I think it needs something here or there. So I'm gonna soften the different ways. I'm just trying to break it up. I want it to look really natural, organic, meaning I don't want to be able to see a distinct direction of softening or blending. You can do a figure eight. Okay, there we go. There's our start. I know the green's probably, it's really hard for me to see exactly what you're seeing, so if I have to look off to the side, it's because I have a TV over there, so I can see what you're seeing. Because right now, what I see here is I've got a lot of green going on, but it looks like in the screen, I don't see any green. I'll figure out how to deal with that as we get uh, farther along. Um, but you'll see in the finished product, it'll all come together. But you know what, I might, uh, yeah, why not? No, we're good. Now I'm gonna take my sea sponge, and it's gonna be a lit, so if I take it, it's 
when it's damp, I want it just a little, how do I say this? It's a little wetter than damp, meaning it's got a little bit of water in it. And here's why. I want it to hit that glaze and kind of open up some of my base like this. I'm just going to tap it and pull some of that glaze off and open up some of the base. Just like so. Now the other thing I'm going to do is rubbing alcohol. Can you see that? There's a strong glare coming from this way. I'll deal with that um, after I get done. I don't want to mess things up now. 91% uh, get it to look, whatever, anywhere. Um, the reason for 91% the higher the alcohol content, the faster it evaporates when it hits the surface. The lower the alcohol content, it becomes like more like syrup. And what I do is I'm going to assist the surface, put the alcohol on my fingers, I'll float all the excess and hit it. And what that does is when the alcohol hits the glaze, it opens it up. Alcohol and water don't mix very well. So when it, the alcohol hits, if this is the glaze and it hits it, it opens it up, it evaporates, closes back down. And it creates all kinds of cool little fun stuff. So now, while that's sitting up there doing its thing, I lost my veining brush. I bet it's by the sink. I'll be right back. Three, two, one. Imagine that. It's exactly where I put it when I put it away. Okay. This is our veining brush. Number six. Red sable pencil liner. Nice long handle so you can hold it different directions like a conductor. I can do a pencil grip if I need to. And I can also do it where uh, I have my hand like so. Place it here, thumb, finger, or middle finger, and the index finger is out here. So I can kind of roll it and twist. Um, it's made from red sable hair. And the big, this is an English style pencil writer or veining brush. Um, it's all about the, for the, it's the length and the amount of bristles. There's different types out there. The Dutch and the French use a slightly a different type of brush. No big, um, not a big deal. Two different styles. Okay, so now, veining solution right here. This is not glaze. This is not paint. This is lemon lime soda, not diet. The lemon lime soda. Opened a can up the other day. Let it sit so it's no longer um, carbonated. It's flat. Added mix all number 25, the white pigment. And that's where we're at. I load up my brush. And you're wondering why. Sugars and starches. If I use glaze or paint, the veins get real fat, real muddy. And uh, I, I don't like them. And they don't look natural. We want thin, tight veins. And uh, this works great. And because we're working wet into wet, when it dries, it dries super solid. So don't worry about um, little things. Now, with veining, in a workshop, we give you all these... Uh, papers and all these <sighs> we do demonstration and then we do the hands-on practical side to understand the veining how veins are the biggest thing when veining you're not going to see lots of you're not going to see the same size or same color of intensity of the vein crisscrossing and doing different things when the veins uh, with this is uh, the vert de mir, the veins are most of the veins will go pretty much in the same direction and <coughs> um, if veins cross or intersect or do things, it's going to be usually of a different color or different intensity or different color intensity. Yes, pretty true. So like a bright white vein is not going to intersect another bright white vein of the exact same brightness um, or the same thickness. So let's get started. And the biggest thing to do to learn how to, to do your veining is practice, study, look at marbles. I have two control pieces right here that I work off of. Uh, and during the workshop, we always work off pictures so you know what you're trying to do versus working, going somebody. It's like, what's it supposed to look like? And the instructor goes, like mine. But I don't even know if that looks like the real one. Because there's a lot of marbles you don't even see anymore. You have to go by pictures. Okay. Let's see. Where are we going to start here on this cat? And you're working on the tip of the brush, okay? Don't, don't bend the brush down. 
Badger brush, we're going to soften down, 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 not back and forth because that just makes it heavy, wide, and thick, and we don't want that. And then uh, I'm just going to keep working and then uh, not babble, play a little music for you.
So you see I've got a bunch of veining going on. Some bigger ones, thinner ones. The little tiny guys, real faint. Like this one, it cuts through these two big ones here. Different color, different or different intensity of the white. Just I just didn't use as much. You know, a couple strong veins, some real soft, faint things here and there. You gotta be, I mean, you can keep going. Just There's so many photos you can work with. Now a lot of this though is gonna be obliterated and it's gonna become just background. Uh, once I get into the, the next layer, the next process. So this has to dry 100%. And then um, we'll come back and get on the next step of the process. Okay, so the first coat is completely dried. We're ready to move on. And what we're going to simply do is get our clear glaze straight out of the can. Black nylon bristle brush. We're going to put a slip coat on just like we did at the beginning. Again, it's going to help hydrate the surface. So our, when we go to manipulate the material, we have a lot more time to manipulate without it. And do what we want to do. This is straight out of the can. I do like to dilute this glaze, usually about 5%. It's kind of thick when it comes out of the, right out of the container. It's not a big deal. Um, you know, why buy water if you don't have to? Glaze works just as good. Just don't go crazy when you dilute it. You just want it real nice. I mean, it's, it's almost like a gel kind of consist. I don't want to say gel, but it's thick straight out of the can. And then what can happen is it goes on too thick and it loses if you put it on too thick, you can lose some of your transparency. So, stretching back out, just slip coat, put it on top to bottom, come back side to side, and then finish off top to bottom, just so I know it's nice and even. And I use less and less pressure when I do that, so I get rid of my brush strokes. Okay, just like we did before, clean, damp, natural wool sea sponge. Let's get into our green. We're going to need some more, too. This is the uh, Mixol 15 Olive. So I'm going to kind of put it on, just like we did before. And I'm, as I'm watching what you're watching, I, it's weird. It um, looks totally different, so I have to figure out how to overcome that. Not that it's not going to be a big deal. I'll probably have to highly exaggerate it here, so it might look a little heavy. Let's start there. Let's get our plastic bag, the real thin guy. Break it up. Okay. And see how it starts to push those old, the first layer of veining underneath. So it starts to create that layered effect, that look that we're looking for. I think I need some more green up in here. Based on what you're seeing, that's what's tough. Because what I'm seeing here, it's got a lot of green, but no big deal. And again, as you're putting a green, you know, kind of move your hand around a little bit. Don't keep it, uh, you don't want a consistent look. We don't, want, we don't want to create an 80s sponge looking kitchen. Yeah, there we go. All right, now let's uh, clean the sponge. Quick rinse in the water. We're going to take our glaze, now that we have that done, I'm going to use uh, Burnt Umber as my next color. And uh, Mixol doesn't make a, 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 a true Burnt Umber, meaning like a dark brown. So what I do is I take number three, uh, it's, I believe it's called Terra Brown, which means it's earth brown. And uh, a little bit of black, number one. And then um, I mix just a tiny bit of black into my brown to get that, what we typically think of a Burnt Umber to look like. And with the damp, I rinsed out the sea sponge. Now be careful, this is a strong color. All right, like offload it before you get into it. Because in these small amounts, and I mean it's strong, it can push this thing in a direction that uh, you don't want to go in, go to, and it can happen really fast.
we just want little hints of it. So what the our burnt umber does when it blends in with that green, it warms it up a little bit. Plastic's getting a little hard to manipulate here. So I've got some green on one side and some of the, brown, the burnt umber on the other side just so I can kind of like dance the two colors around a little bit. Just like we did before, we're gonna get a little white in there as well. Rinse it out. Actually, I'm gonna come in here first with this sponge and kind of open some of this up. Nah. Let's get the white going. Light touch, all right? Badger brush, where'd she go? Here she is. I'm gonna come in here and start softening as I go now. Getting that cloudy effect, all right? Get some more white. The white's gonna be more of a cloud. We're not actually, I mean, we're still gonna go in that somewhat diagonal pattern, but not necessarily as much heavy or intense with the color. I'm gonna just soften everything in as I go. Now the thing about the glaze is it's always gonna vary based on temperature and humidity, all right? So don't, uh, I can't give you an exact, like I did, I mean, the last time I did this one, not the last time, last time I was on, the guy was like, when's this stuff gonna dry so we know we can get to it? I was like, dude, it dries when it dries. And he got smart with me and I'm like, I can't give you an exact time. It's gonna dry when it dries and that's when I can do my thing. He wasn't happy about it. I'm like, this is not paint, and I'm not gonna rush it with artificial heat. Because you just don't know what sometimes you're gonna get with the artificial heat. So I'm gonna soften this out, even just keep going. Like I said, different directions, figure eights if you want. I'm using a little bit more pressure right now. Let's, glaze is kind of setting up because it's really hot in here. Let's put a little bit of white in there. White in there. So what happened now is I softened it first. If you notice, I was kind of white and softening, white and then softening, and it kind of lost some of my white. I don't want to lose the white. I just I want to see those hints of it. So by coming back and just pressing it into, it's not blending. It's not blending into the point where it melts in, but it's a. Uh, laying kind of, you know, you're seeing the difference of the white. So we're getting two different effects. Some of the white's kind of blended into the back, creating a different shade because it blended in. Some of it's on the surface. All right, there we go. Let's get our alcohol out, you know, rubbing alcohol 91%. I'm gonna fling it in there so it kind of just opens some of that up again. Now this only happens when this glaze is wet. If it's kind of sticky, tacky, it doesn't happen. Um, when it's dry, it definitely doesn't do anything. That's all we're gonna do. Badger Handy veining brush, our lemon lime soda, white pigment solution or white colorant. Mix on number 25. And what we're gonna do is see how the veins now are way in the back and are kind of like, they're more like a muted lime green. I'm gonna rework some of them and bring them back. Some of them, not all of them, because I want some to stay in the background. So it's kind of, and I use my other hand sometimes to support this hand.
that's that's it. That's all I'm going to work on today. Um, I think that's. I don't want to get too busy. Don't want to get too crazy. I'm going to pull my tape off and try to show you this as close up as I can. Now, once it dries, um, and I mean dry, dry, dry. I usually try to let it sit at least. Uh, it's going to sit at least 24 hours. Um, Oops, sorry about that, I bumped something. I will top coat it with uh, oil-based satin polyurethane. And so I know people are gonna be like, why not water-based, oil-based? Oh, yeah, I used to use oil-based and it tends to yellow. Yeah, that's some of the older stuff. Um, I haven't had any issues actually with the, the modern oil-based products. Oh, get off my fingers. Um, and I really like the one from, uh, oh, this one I'm using it actually has like a umber. It's got a, a warm glow to it when I put it on there. So hopefully you get the idea of the colors. The problem with these white veins under all these bright lights is, I mean, they're, they come out super intense. Now once it dries down, it uh, the white kind of dissipates a pinch. But you know what? I'm going to let this dry, and I am going to clear coat it. Uh, no, I'm not going to worry about it. Um, but if I clear it here, let me get you. Let's see all that happen in there. That one right through the center is really intense. She will dull down. Let me kind of give you an idea. This is the one I did uh, the other day. It's not as, I don't, I'm not crazy about it, but see how they die down a little bit. I don't like the veining on this one at all. I was just practicing, working, and just more, more focusing on the veining. Um, from doing the veining and not necessarily the placement placement of the veining and that's kind of what we do in the workshops but this gives you an idea see your divert the mirror like I said I could come in and kind of break this up a little bit more because it is pretty intense and I just don't like how intense the white is but as it dries down believe it or not it will break down and then I would come back and I usually brush at least one coat of oil based polyurethane satin over top of it but there you go simple vert de mirror fun finish um, hopefully you can see all the stuff that's happening. Um, there you go. Columns, wall panels, moldings, furniture, anywhere you can think of it that would look, work and look good. There you go. Okay, there you have it. Um, I want to thank you for watching. I'd really appreciate if you went down below and hit the like and subscribe button. When you hit the subscribe button, then you'll be updated when new videos pop up. My name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops and complete commission projects for clients all around the country. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.